<laughs> We're live. We are We're live. live. We are live. Whoa. All right. I'm closing Facebook so I don't get distracted. I'm closing all these other things. Don't get yeah. distracted, Jeremy, because you're here for a purpose. I am here for a purpose. For a, a... What is my purpose? Is it Your to do purpose. this show or is there something more? <laughs> Your purpose is to uh, have a discussion with me and others about uh, where Whistlekick came mm. from. So we're gonna do we're gonna do Whistlekick's origin story today. Okay, we can do that. Yeah, uh, I should also go to oh comments. We got people uh, people, people in the are, chat. People are piling in. Yep. Uh, I'll show some Mark Warner. So that's awesome. Congratulations. What's thanks, up? Mark. Thanks, Mark. Uh, and so for those of you who, who are watching now or perhaps watching later, uh, we're going to give it a couple minutes just to let people ha get in here, get their notifications so they can show up. And then we're going to kind of get rolling. So um, if you're if you're looking at this and saying, hey, Jeremy, this isn't uh, terribly substantive. Yeah. Um, what are you, you doing? Would be, you you doing would be it. right. You would be right. This is not worthy of celebrating 800 episodes. You're right. Uh, but it will be. We will get there. All things in their due time. Um, so I am just uh, hanging out here in my off my uh, office in the basement here. Just Your office? Out, my office. Office? Yeah. office? Is uh, it like a combination of awesome and office? That, yeah, pretty much. Pretty office. Much. Uh, how was your day today, Jeremy? What did you do? Um, I, I worked. I worked and uh, I'm fighting off a cold. So I took many, several naps trying to stay ready to go for this. And it actually, it made me wonder when, you know, when, when somebody's hosts a show, you know, like say like Jimmy Fallon or something or anybody on that level, they must get sick from time to time. What do they do? That's a really good point. The, the, you know what? It's showbiz. The show must go on. The show must go on. I'm sure they have access to better you know like don't look or feel sick right now meds but do they have stuff that is that much better they also have makeup people too are you saying i need makeup no i'm saying they can use makeup to cover up if they're like yeah but if your nose is running there's no amount i mean you can't like make up your nose you can make up the redness in your nose but if you got snot running down your face uh hey i'm gonna close my door that's fine so Jeff is at, asking about one of my least favorite things that I've ever seen, uh, neti pots. It's, like, <laughs> it's, it's self waterboarding. It's the most miserable experience I've ever had. And Brian says guest host and reruns. Yes, if it's really bad, but if it's not like I, I'm not that bad right now. Right. So like it just it just made me wonder, you know, because they're exposed to a lot of people and I'm sure that they're constantly fighting something off because of that. Yeah. Uh, so uh, we've got before, about before, before we get started though, and I, I want to recognize you for doing all this. You put oh. this together. You came up with the format. You figured out what we were doing, and you got everybody lined up. And I didn't have to do anything, and I love that. So thank you. Yeah. Well, thanks. I appreciate that. You know what? We have uh, talked a bit about. We started planning this a month and a half ago. We're like, oh crap, episode eight hundred is coming up uh what are we gonna do and so it well, got we started talking about it a lot you know actually we had our first conversations about this months ago yeah probably. as we were trying to come up with something that would be a little bit different than what we've done in the past yeah and i guess we probably started talking about it three months ago and yeah. we kept kicking the can down the road because we couldn't figure out what the heck we we're gonna do yeah. and about a month and a half ago i sat down and, and said well right, what are we what was episode 100 mm. episode 100 was uh, you yourself was interviewed mm -hmm. so the audience got to hear more about you and you know we looked at all the other things that we've done for the the milestone markers and i thought you know what we've really come a long way oh wait that leads to a perfect uh episode 800 idea which is the kind of chronological timeline of what whistlekick mm -hmm. uh is today and how it got to where it is today that's a good point yeah and, and so, here we are 
Yeah, and so that's what we're going to do. And throughout the show, I'm just people are going to send little messages in. Uh, if, if you want to send a message to us, feel free to uh, uh, put it in the chat, and uh, you know, may may put it up on the screen if it's uh, appropriate. Um, but I figured or it's mildly inappropriate. Well, if it's, if it's mildly inappropriate, maybe I'll still put it on. We'll see. If it's majorly inappropriate, I'll just notice it and laugh. <laughs> well, that's fair. Um, I'm going to because I'm going to get a sidebar. There we go. Because I've got I've got things planned out. You've got it. You've got it dialed. Pretty much, yeah. So, uh, Jeremy, we're going to start out with just you and I. We, when I say we, I mean Whistlekick we, not me. Yeah. When the show first started the out, royal we. Uh, the royal we. When this uh, podcast started out, it was just you. It was just me. It was just you interviewing a person. Do you remember who that person was? Do you remember episode one? Episode, yeah, episode one? one was my old friend Hughes and Alexander. That's right. So uh, thank, thank you for confirming. <laughs> well, letting all the audience know, yep, Jeremy remembers. He um, does remember. So that very first episode, it was just you and who's on. What was, what was going through your head at that point? What have I gotten myself into? Can I actually pull this off? Can I actually figure out how to interview stuff, people? Can I, can I put together a show that people are going to watch or at that point listen to? Is it going to be worth the time? You know, it was it was a lot of a lot of concern, a lot of fear. Yeah. Um, because at the time that we were doing this, you know, Whistlekick at that point was simply a sparring gear company, and was I was struggling to get the word out, and so I had this massive list. I've talked about this a little bit before. I had this massive Excel Excel sheet, and I still have it somewhere. And it was all of the ideas. What are all the things we could do to advance the company? And I mean, it was like 75 things. And so I came up with my own scoring system, time, money, and impact. And I rated all of the things. And I suspected that having a podcast would be the top option because it was going to take some time and a little bit of money and potentially could have a massive impact. And when I worked it through the numbers, absolutely, that was the case. Mm -hmm. And so we did it. But of course, when you do a thing, you don't know how it's going to go. And we've talked about this a little bit before that I was not the original intended host for the show. And because at the time I was a very shy person, the idea of being public wasn't something that I was comfortable with. The idea of being the face of anything was not something I was comfortable with. And I mean, obviously a lot has changed but i had to step up yeah yeah and i you know you have talked about you were not initially going to be the host uh i think most of the people watching or listening would agree they're they're glad that you are because you do a phenomenal job the Thank number you. of times that uh we hear a guest say oh that was a very good question or you know i've never thought that like that was really good that happens a lot and that's because you are uh, listening with uh, intent, and you bring a lot of insight to your interviews, and so oh, that's thank you. That, that's really good. And so we we as the audience uh, get to benefit from that. So thank you. It, it started. So I, I I've been very public. I don't I don't research, mm -hmm. you know, and that surprises guests a lot. And it started because I didn't have the time. <laughs> I was like, okay, yeah. I'm going to have this person on for a show that is going to be listened to by, at the time, you know, 50 people. How many hours can I justify putting in on top of the recording and the editing and the publishing and all that? Am I really going to put in half a day researching this person? Yeah. Yep. And the answer was no. But what I found as, because I also listen to a lot, a lot of podcasts by not researching it put me more on the same page with the audience yeah. and i realized that the thing that drove me nuts about some podcasts was as a listener i felt like i wasn't in on the joke so mm. to speak that i didn't have the information 
that the host and the guest, if it was that kind of a show, had time in before me, you know, and I wasn't able to, to, to hang and to go along on the ride with them. And so what started out as not having time actually turned into my style. Yeah. Well, and it allows you to not go in with any sort of agenda because you have no idea. And, exactly. and occasionally, occasionally you do. You may know the guest ahead of time, yep. but, but for the most part, you don't. Know. But, I, but I pretend I don't, right? I try to think if, if there are things that I know about them, if the audience is going to need that context, we'll still talk about it. I don't gloss over it. And I think if there's something that I have that makes me a skilled interviewer, it's the fact that it's, I, I don't, I don't care what I have to think in yeah. the context. It's not my episode. It's mm -hmm. the guest's episode. Yeah. And so I shut the heck up. <laughs> I mean, that's really, that's the, if you listen to martial arts radio, when I interview someone, you listen to most interviews. That's the big difference is I shut up and I yeah. let the guest talk. And we've talked about this a little bit before. I'll, I'll, I, I think we have to move on, but I'll, I'll say this one thing. If you, if you all listen to the show, quite often there will be points where I'm talking and then the guest talks and they think that they're passing the ball back to me, but I know that there's more that they want to say or should say. And so I shut up. Yeah. And I create, see, it was right when you said it, I create yeah. that, that, That's that hot. discomfort in the silence and someone will be willing to fill it. If I'm not going to fill it, it's the guest. And in that moment, when the guest fills that space, they're not censoring themselves. Hmm. And that's my big strategy, my big strategy, right? That's all I've got. I've, I've got my whole philosophy as an interviewer is I don't talk, right? You're a one trick like, pony. Got it. But it works. Yeah. And, you know, you're not the only one that does that sort of thing. Uh, you know, Brian just said. Uh, actually commented that he does little research on his guests, which, uh, so, you know, it's, it's a good way to go. Brian's show, Everyday Martial Artist. That's right. He does a wonderful show. Would, would encourage folks to check out what he does. Um, in the really early days, it was just you. You did everything. It was Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio was a one-man show. Uh, what was that like? I, I realized how much I hated audio editing. Hmm. It is not enjoyable. I can still do it. And once in a while, we'll put things out. Like, um, we haven't done any in a little while, but they're on my agenda to do some more quick hits. You know, those like kind of 60 second things. Like those are, those are me. You know, I still have the skills and I did a fine job. Julius does a much better job Ooh. and I'm glad that we have him and I'm glad that I don't have to edit. And I'm glad that his standards for audio quality are much higher than mine ever were. Which leads perfectly into uh it was a one-man show for a while and then you realized uh, i don't want to do this all alone and um julius is the first person that we're going to chat about really quickly we'll segue into the next part of our uh, of our episode here talk about how julius and how you got connected with him and and how what he, what he does julius was the first person that i brought on and you know he's he lives internationally and I hired him through a website, you know, I was like, this is what I need. I need somebody to edit this podcast and put together a transcript and, you know, handle all, all the back end stuff. Basically, I just wanted to hand somebody uh, my notes from the episode and the raw audio and have them put it together. And I put together, you know, I, I'd had a format, right? Like there was intro and there was outro and I had to record those and, and, you know, that had to be spliced. But it's easy to forget that back in those early days, I paused a lot. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of, uh, let me think about where I want to go from here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, early, anybody, any guest from the first probably 50, maybe even 100 episodes. It doesn't happen very often now. But I would say, okay, give me a second while I think about how I want to transition. I, I rarely do that now. Yeah. But there was a lot of work. How long, how long was it before you brought Julius on board? Do you, do you remember how long you had been doing it by yourself? A year or two. Okay. 
because we're just about at eight years now, and he's been with us for six, if I'm remembering correctly. Yeah, so that's and, and he does, and he does a phenomenal job. You know, I, I, I never have to question the quality of his work, which, which I absolutely love. And he's given a lot of suggestions, and he's become part of the team. You yeah. know, and I'm, I'm really, I'm really thankful for him. You know, and I love that we're able to give somebody work that um, has been impactful in their life. And it, it gives him a lot of flexibility with his life. You know, I'm not going to tell his story, sure. but you know, you know, a little bit, we, we've talked about what goes on with him. I'm not going to, you know, put his story out there publicly because I didn't ask him if he was okay with that, but he's a, he's a member of the team. And there are times, there are times, Andrew, when you and I record and we'll just kind of say, you know, we'll talk to him like through the episode. It's like, Oh, Julius, uh, take that part out or whatever. So. Or, or even just do fun things before, or after the yeah. episode. Like, hey, yeah. Julius, watch this. You know, there, are, like, there are ridiculous things that none of you have ever seen that Julius gets to see. So, yeah, you know, that's right. Again, right? It's value. There's my favorite word. Try to give so, value to, to him. So, for a long time, it was just the two of you. Uh, and then uh, at this point in the show, this I feel like, Jeremy, this is your life. <sighs> <laughs> so, I'm going to bring somebody on uh, and we're going to talk to them. And it's the next person that you brought onto the team. And yeah. so let's see if I do this right. I think I hit this button. And then all of a sudden, Hi, guys. Hey, Leslie. We are joined by Leslie. How are you? I'm doing well. How about you guys? Great. Good. Great. Um, so, Leslie, you are a name that was mentioned fairly often uh, for a long time when you were involved with the show. Um, but there may be people now that maybe got involved. Mm recently that that might not know who you are so uh i would love for you to tell us how you got connected to whistle kick and what you what you did and then i'm gonna jeremy i'm gonna ask you to, to sure. comment a little bit um certainly so um jeremy and i knew each other a little bit from um martial arts events in the area we had um met at various tournaments and that Maybe you know, acquainted for is there someone who would like to get involved with the show? I realized I need some help with this, and I was like, oh yeah, I get to talk to my artists and you know interact with all these cool people. Sign me up. So um, it sort of grew from there, and uh, I started out just sort of helping suggest guests, helping reach out to guests. Um, the first guest I booked was, I believe, Adrian Paul from Highlander. That was, I think, the first guest I booked on the show. So that was early 2019, I think. Um, and uh, so I would sort of, um, you know, hear about someone. People would suggest guests to me. I would, you know, hear their names. I would go, hey, that's an interesting style of martial arts. I'd like to learn more about that. Who's somebody that practices that? That kind of thing. And it kind of, you know, it kind of grew from from that, and it was a, a ton of fun. <laughs> um, Jeremy, what did it what did it help, or what did it mean to you to have Leslie a part of the team now and be able to take some of that burden off of you? It, it was it was something that I hadn't realized quite as much beforehand. I didn't realize how much time I was spending getting guests onto the show, and I had zero awareness uh thanks robin i had zero awareness hi nathan how with without intent how that i was biased right my connections were primarily to karate and taekwondo practitioners and so if, if you look if you look at when leslie came on you can there's two very marked differences in who came on after the first is we started seeing more grappling because that's something that she's been passionate about for a long time. And then secondly, we had more women come on. And that was something, you know, we've never had a quota on the show. It's always been, you know, let's, we, we want variety, right? And Andrew, you and I have talked about this, that there's no, there's no rule here, but you know, if we look at our guests and it's, 
you know, just a string of guys, just as if we looked at our guests and it was a string of women or a string of karate practitioners, you know, we're, we're looking for variety. And it was something that had you not been part of the show, Leslie, I don't know when that would have happened because I, you know, I'm not aware of my own biases and the show took a huge step forward and upward because of not just those things, but many things that you implemented. The show became professional when you became part of it. Well, thank you. I, uh, I really appreciate that. Um, and it's, it's awesome. I've uh, stepped back from helping out with the show now, but I still consider myself sort of part of the Whistlekick family and I'm still friends with everybody and kind of uh, yeah. suggest uh, guests here and there. I'm like, oh, hey, I heard about this person. You should maybe talk to them, that kind of thing. So I still yeah. like to kind of chip in where I can because it's such a great team and it's, it's um, a lovely community of, of martial artists from so many different styles and backgrounds and you kind of, you know, the, the really cool part of it is that you see all these these people who are on the surface so different. You know, they've made you know, different styles of martial arts, different backgrounds, different places, but they all have those common those commonalities, those um, those traits that you find uniquely in martial artists. Well, maybe not uniquely, but commonly in martial artists, and that's kind of you know it, it builds this this great community, and that's. Uh, you know, the best part of it for me is just all these cool people, all these, uh, been a wonderful experience and something I'm very happy to have been involved in and continue on various levels to, to still be somewhat involved in. <laughs> well, I know you set the bar high for Andrew and he's, he's worked hard to... Andrew's, Andrew's awesome. <laughs> he, he is. He's doing a great job uh, and you did a great job, but you know what, Thank I've got to say, you had the harder job because there was nobody... <laughs> All the all the things that, I, that you had to figure out, he just got to do what you were doing. Yeah, it was definitely easier for me, Leslie, because you put a lot of stuff already <laughs> in place. Uh, and so when I came on board, you made it incredibly easy for me to just step in. And I can't imagine how difficult it must have been for you to not have had that. So thank you very much for for all you've done for Whistlekick, and uh, even you are you mentioned it already. You are absolutely still. Uh, a part of the Whistlekick family. For sure. This this podcast would not be where it is today without you. Wholeheartedly agree. Awesome. Well, Leslie, thank you for thank coming on. Thank you so on. much, guys. Awesome. All right, so we're going to let you go. Uh, let's see how do I do this. Thank uh, you. Bye. All right, so, uh, yeah, that was cool. That was really fun. Uh, Jeff Curry says, uh, when did you realize that you needed people because your guests started to have people due to their fame? The, the two weren't connected. I, I think I understand why Jeff's asking the question in that way. And it wasn't connected. It was, you know, once, um, you know, what I realized, okay, so, you know, bringing Julius on was, was kind of necessary and it really helped the show move forward. And I had, I don't remember all the details. I'm sure I could track back, but I think bringing Lessie on was, I think this would be a good thing. And some of it was because I realized that going after bigger guests meant more work. Mm, yeah. And I didn't have the time, right? And once I realized, okay, by offloading things on my plate so someone can focus on them, can do a good job, can invest their energy into it, things get better. Ah, that was actually a, a massive transition, not just for the show, but for the company. Awesome. All right. So uh, you continued Leslie as a, uh, you know, helping get guests. She's your kind of booking manager. And then uh, I'm going to add to the stream the next person, our next guest to chat with, which is Mr. Chris Rickard. Hey, guys. How's it going, man? 800. 800. 800. <laughs> It's like the sequel to 300. And then so the, 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 you know, they, they survived that one. The odds are a little less in their favor, a little more in their favor. There we go. So Chris, welcome. It's great to have you uh, back on the show because you've been here before. This is not, uh, it's not like your first time here. Yeah. Third time's the charm. That's right. Three. right. Um, 
talk a little bit about how you got connected to the show and you're still currently working for Whistlekick. So talk a little bit about how you got connected and what is it that you do here? So way back in 2017, my five-year-old daughter finally said, hey, I want to do martial arts. And I was like, yes. And at that point, my wife said that I could get back into martial arts as well because she knew how big of a role it had played for me um, back when I was living in the state of Maryland. And I've been listening to podcasts since long, long time ago. And I found Whistlekick there in 2017 and I started listening. And every once in a while, I would shoot Jeremy an email in response to something that was on. And then on one episode, I think it might've actually been a first cup episode. Jeremy said, if we had unlimited funding for Whistlekick as a company, what would you do? And I was like, okay, well, I shot him an email. And it was like, here's the idea. You're going to actually interview everybody in person. None of this Skype, none of this Zoom, none of the way that we're used to doing it. You get to interview them in person. And then when the interview is over, you get to do a training with them where they teach you one thing that is sort of their signature thing or something they love. And that got me a phone call where it was like, hey, can we talk about this? And we made a go of something along those veins and it didn't appear out or didn't work out because it wasn't the right time. Not saying it's not something that we wouldn't pursue in the future, but that wasn't the time. But that's where I got involved. That's and great. I forgot about that. Yeah. And so my role's been, I talk to Jeremy. I bounce questions off of him. He has questions. He bounces them off to me. I read things. I ask questions. I read Master Hopkick. I write a book of questions that instructors can use for Matt Chat. That was my effort at like a subtle transition that I just blew out of the water by pointing it out. But that's kind of my role. It's I've helped out with the Never Settle Awards. It's a lot of looking, a lot of reading, a lot of question kind of stuff. Whistlekick's kind of blurry in terms of where lines end, right? You know, we're, w w there are plenty of people for whom Whistlekick is the show, right? That's the way that they engage. For some, it's free training day. And one of the things that I appreciate about you, Chris, is that no matter what piece it is, if I say, hey, what do you think? I know I'm going to get a thorough and honest answer. And everyone needs a Chris in their life oh, because, that's not, because not everyone gives good feedback. Feedback is a skill. And most people give feedback in such a way that they're protecting everyone's feelings. You've never once tried to protect my feelings. You've always been, I mean, not that you're intentionally mean, but you recognize that what is important is the work. And you deliver what needs to be delivered and and it's we've we've built a friendship out of that because I, I i trust you i know i can trust you completely and that's not something that one can say about everybody does i mean yeah, i steve, appreciate steve that watson, a lot stephen watson agrees everyone does need a chris in their life and coming from stephen watson i think that is high praise <laughs> absolutely sure I, is. you know it, it jeremy you mentioned that uh you know that it's hard. The lines are kind of blurry in terms of where stuff starts and ends. And yep. um, I think that's a great analogy for it because we all do a little bit of everything. You know, mm -hmm. we, at Whistlekick right now, we're celebrating Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. But, you know, there's a lot more than just Martial Arts Radio that Whistlekick does. And so a lot of us have fingers in a lot of different pies. So, yeah. uh, and Chris, Chris, Chris mentioned no two of them the the awards and, and the books yeah absolutely well chris thanks so much for coming on uh, anything you want to any final words you want to leave the audience with it's a pleasure it's always fun you're thanks. always going to learn something you never know who's going to show up on another episode again i'll throw it out here now so we can get it out of the way and hopefully at some point we're going to be able to add chuck norris to the list fingers crossed like it's there but We'll see. Every story is interesting. Every story is unique. And again, gentlemen, you do a great job every week of bringing us another one. So we appreciate it. 
Thank you. Thanks, Chris. Uh, I'll, I'll leave you with this last comment here from uh, Stacy. <laughs> Chris, thank you so much for coming on. Uh, it was great to have you back, and we'll see you soon. Sounds good, guys. Thanks, Bye-bye. Man. That last comment for anybody watching that is not in on the joke, because most of you are not in on the joke, uh, I, I'm not going to explain the joke because jokes are rarely good when they're explained. But I will say that um, one of the things that's very important to me as we build out this team and we grow this organization is that people have fun. And you can see a lot of that, you know, the meetings that we have. I, I hate meetings. I absolutely hate meetings to the point where many years ago I coined Jeremy's corollary of meetings. The more people that show up, the less that gets done. And I make sure that we have fun and we do have fun. And, and most of what enables the fun is me just getting out of the way, right? Yeah. Me shutting up and letting people talk, right? Like there's a lot of that. Yeah. So a uh, quick shout out here to Jared Wilson. He says, congrats on outlasting all the other martial arts podcasts. Persistence is everything in the martial arts. Well, thank you, Jared. And for those of you who don't know, uh, Jared and I bonded uh, because he uh, was the host of Martial Thoughts. And he came on Martial Arts Radio and I went on his show and we, we formed a friendship and um, he's still involved with uh, Martial Journal. And again, another person that if I want feed, excuse me, feedback, I will reach out to because he, you know, I, tr I trust him. He knows what I stand for. Yep. And uh, Chris mentioned something else that I think is wor worth mentioning. There's so many other martial arts podcasts out there. And some of them are amazing. They are really good. But 2017 was kind of an interesting time because the ones that came before Whistlekick had faded. And we weren't quite at the, the new crop yet. So when we look at, oh, we have 800 episodes, there are plenty of other shows that I think will get there. But they're just going to be a few years behind. Yep. yep. Um, so we're ready to bring on our next guest next person that started working for whistle kick uh and that guest is stacy hey, hello congratulations thank you thank you so much thanks for being here thanks for being a part of it uh the same question that i asked leslie and chris how did you get connected to uh whistle kick and and talk a little bit about what you're doing now uh, there was this guy bringing in plastic garbage bags full of sparring gear to a uh, tournament that I was at, and it didn't seem like he had a, a lot of help and hands. Uh, so I just started hauling stuff with him um, and started bonding over, um, you know, sparring gear, being a person who doesn't enjoy sparring, but was intrigued by this is a local, local guy putting out good gear um, showing up in my space. Um, yeah. And from there, it just kind of fanned out to doing photos for a tournament he had, photos for yeah. all the various free training days. I've been to all but the very, very first one. Um, and the distance ones. And the you've been to all the you've been to the Northeast ones. Yeah, yeah. Yes, all all the Northeast ones. Sorry, <laughs> this is true. I did not go to Washington and Seattle. <laughs> um, <laughs> Now I am the person heading up um, the funniest meeting on the planet and the Never Settle Awards for uh, Whistle Kick. Uh, I head up a group of people who, all of whom hate meetings. We start our meeting at 8.30 at night. So my job is to have a meeting that um, gets stuff done and gets people laughing. Yep. Someone generally falls on the floor. That's true. <laughs> And and I, I want to I want to point something out because this is, you know, I remember a, a bunch of what say Chris was talking about. I remember a bunch of what Lessie was talking about. I don't remember our exact first meetings. I remember the day Stacey's talking about though, because there's a really strong emotional element there for me. Um, I had set up a booth at a local martial arts event where I knew a dozen, two dozen people large chunk of the people in the room and it was time to leave and i'm granted sparring gear isn't heavy but i'm moving a whole bunch of stuff from one side of a gymnasium the long way to the other to load up my car 
and dozens of people who knew me, they didn't, they didn't offer to help. They didn't grab bags. Stacy just grabbed bags and started walking. She's like, here, I'll help you. And as someone who does not accept help lightly or easily, and as someone who has often prided themselves on doing things by themselves, right? Like I've been pretty independent most of my life. Something that, yeah, I know, I know you can relate to that too, Stacey. Well, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> um, that meant a lot. And, and um, there, was, there was an understanding. And just as with many others, hey, what about, what about this? Would you take pictures? Would you do this? Would you do that? And the answer was always yes. There you go. Thanks, Victor. <laughs> Says it all right there. Um, and you've done, I mean, you when you first got involved with Whistlekick, though, you weren't doing the Never Settle Awards. Was there stuff in the middle there? Because you, you were involved actually before I was. Um, I'd say one of the biggest things I did, um, mm. also in turn changed uh, my world just a little bit, was when I went off to photograph Jeremy's tournament, um, he had brought up this group called the United States Breaking Association, who were doing some crazy breaking in the corner. From that, I have gotten involved in the crazy breaking in the corner. Um, you know, stack them up, let me add it. Um, and that's, that's opened a whole lot of doors. Um, both in, you know, how I function in the martial arts, how I function at work. Um, you know, that's, that to me has been part of it is, yes, it's nominally about martial arts, but it's applicable anywhere. Yep. Right. That's, that's awesome. Right. Well, thank you so much for coming on, Stacey. Any last things you want to say before you head out? Um, I will say congratulations and here's to, um, falling off your chair many, many more nights. <laughs> Thank so, you, Stacey. Before I le let you go here, a uh, couple of comments here. First off, uh, you have a superpower. Uh, Stacy. you keep Tommy and Craig uh, focused. It's like a superpower. It, that is a superpower. He's right. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> yes. The other is. one is uh, Chris wants to know if we get bonus points if Jeremy falls out of a chair. Right now? Um, uh, during this episode, do we get bonus points so we can make it bonus? Sure, sure, sure. I'll, sure. <laughs> awesome. Stacy. thank you so much for being here and for all that you have and continue to do for Whistle King. Oh, I'm in for the long haul. <laughs> awesome. Bye-bye. Thanks, guys. <laughs> well, that was cool. It was. You know, one of the things that I find interesting is that Whistlekick is a mission-driven organization, right? And martial arts radio is uh, a conduit of that mission, right? Like we, we, when you and I record our Thursday episodes, it's usually some subject that ties into the things that we stand for. Yep. Yeah. And what I've come to realize in hindsight, and as I read more about business and everything, because I'm trying to get better about all of these things how critically important that is and how much it attracts the right people. You know, I, I've seen multiple people say some uh, things that kind of resonate that they're, they're not using these words, but they're here for the mission. Yeah. They're either part of the team for the mission or they listen because of the mission. They come to events because of the mission. And, you know, we, we, we say it, we say it in every episode what our mission is, you know, connect, educate, and entertain. We're trying to get people training. All right, so the next person that we're going to bring on uh, is a gentleman by the name of Andrew. Oh, hey, hey, great. I was really hoping you were going to have a have some way of working out a costume change. Oh, that would have been nice, but no, no, just me. So the next person that uh, officially came on board was me. Mm. Uh, I got connected because uh, Leslie, who we already had on uh reached out to patreon subscribers and said hey uh just so you guys know we're like struggling a little bit with some guests because there was a computer glitch and we lost some recorded episodes and so we're kind of mm. in the weeds so i can't you know not sure who's going to be coming on next and so i reached out and said 
uh, come on if you think my story would be fun. I don't know. And so, you know, that's how we kind of, I got connected on the show with Leslie. Uh, and then she decided she needed to, you know, stuff happened in her life and she needed to kind of take a step back, which was fine. And you asked if, uh, no, that's not what happened next. No, that's right. You had put out oh. something saying that you were thinking about having a, a co-host. And what do you Patreon subscribers think of that? Yep. And, and you said, wrote to me yep. very quickly after. And you were really excited at the idea. Yep. And I said, well, shoot, I got to give this a shot. Because for people who don't know, we, we, met, we met briefly uh, a couple of years before. Mm -hmm. I think it was within the first year, year and a half, two years. Yeah, we, we could dig back in the emails and we could find it. But you were thinking about doing a drumming podcast. Yep, yep, a pipe band podcast. And so I wanted to know about podcasting and just how it works. And so we met, and you know, it, long time listeners of the show will know the story because we've discussed it before. Mm -hmm. uh, but for any new people, you know, I went up, I drove, I, I sent an email, and Jeremy's like, "Sure, uh, you know, when do you want to? Do you have a phone call?" And uh, I said, no, I'll drive to Montpelier because it's only a couple hours away from me. And so we sat down, had coffee, and you told me about podcasting. And a couple years go by, I don't do my podcast, but you were looking for a co-host. And I said, I would be interested. You probably have a ton of people you could ask, yeah. but I'd be honored if you'd consider me. And so you said, yes, let's do it. And you'd been on the show at that point. You'd had your episode yep. at that point. And... You know, yet again, here's this thing. I finally shut up and say, what about this? I create some space and somebody steps in to fill it. Yeah. Uh, and, and, anyway, then, and then, you know, Leslie had to take a step back. Uh, mm -hmm. And you said, hey, would you, so do you want to do this? Want to do it? Like, uh, and I said, sure. And so that's kind of how it works. And, and Cara or Kara, I apologize if I, whichever that is. Uh, that's how the co-host came in. We work well together. I could not agree more. We do. We do. Very well. We do. And, you know, that didn't take long. And I credit that to your personality. Fair. You know, you, yeah. you, you've, you've got a very open, very friendly, uh, playful, gregarious personality. And, you know, it's really hard to not have back and forth banter chemistry etc with you it's it's partly because i'm i'm <laughs> best of the best okay uh i'm going to bring another guest on uh the next guest in our timeline is adding to the screen right now jenny see you hey guys hey. hi jenny how's it going good how are you good this is fun this is fun. This is fun. Yeah. Yeah. So Jenny, awesome. you know yeah. the question I'm going to ask you. <laughs> yes. It's funny because I know the questions and I was thinking about the answers and it, uh, in one sense, it feels like we've been more or less, Gabe and I have both been a part of uh, Whistle Kick forever. Mm. Um, it feels like we've been a part of the Whistle Kick family forever, but uh, I think, I think the first introduction to whistle kick was gabe my husband got online he was fed up with sparring gear falling apart every six months and he got online and started searching for stuff and um he found whistle kick foot gear and he ordered it and it was the wrong size so he reached out and said hey can i exchange and jeremy you connected with him personally and that meant a lot to him and one thing led to another you guys ended up continuing to interact and um uh, then I do know, I was trying to think about the timeline of things. I think the next big thing was that, uh, he was on an episode with you, um, talking about training and teaching and we, yeah, we, if, if tell me if this sounds right, he would message once in a while and we would write back and forth. Yeah. And he wrote in with a question. And I said, can we make an episode out of this? Right. Okay. And yes. he agreed. And I think, was it was it the question about after he'd gotten hurt? Is it something about that? I think it, I think it was before that, actually. Was it before that? 
I think it might have been. Yeah. But uh, yeah. And then, um, yeah, we just kept interacting. Um, Gabe was, uh, what was he? The producer of? Producer when we launched Whistlekick Live, which Whistlekick we did for yep. 18 months. I'm not yep. going to lie. I forgot about that. Like, it's been, <laughs> I, yeah. I love Gabe. You know that. I just forgot about I love him Live. too. <laughs> uh, he's in he's in the chat. How to balance your own training with teaching. Ah, uh, yes. That's right. Because yeah. that was kind of the transition in. You guys were starting to, to run the school and he felt like he was being pulled in two different directions. And how how do you yeah. balance those two things? Right. Yeah. <laughs> um yeah. He's awesome. He's he's he the best. Awesome. Um and, and what do you do? What are you doing now, working for the for Whistle Kick? Because you're still here. I'm still here. Yeah. So we, um, we don't let people go. For those well, of you out there say, in the I'm chat, I'm not looking for an out. So just so you know, you're stuck with me. People, um, people in the chat are like, "How could I work for Whistle Kick?" It's like, <laughs> be, be ready. You know, you're, it's a, it's a careful lifelong. what you wish for. Right. <laughs> um, yeah. So I ended up, I ended up writing. Um, I feel super honored to be the one that got to write the origin story of Master Hopkick. Um, I ended up taking on that project and wrote the first book a couple of years you, ago. You you rewrote it. We'd had a draft. True. And I think true. you were going to edit it. Yeah. And you so started that's, editing it. Yeah. So you, you and Gabe had a conversation and you had mentioned that you were looking for somebody to edit the first draft that someone else had written. Mm -hmm. And he, he knew I love to write. And so, um, uh, he suggested I get in contact with you about it. You sent it to me and I looked at it and I went, oh man, this needs more than editing. Um, but how do I say that nicely? Long story short, we had a few conversations and uh, it took me a while to receive the message that you didn't care how much I changed it. Um, and so uh, I kept the core. I kept the, I, I think I kept the bones of the story. Um, but I kind of took liberty with, with everything else. And I'm a researcher. That's my thing. I love history. And so one of the, one of the things that I wanted to change was just the historical accuracy of some of the things in there. And so I went and I learned way more than I ever, uh, set out to learn, which was awesome. That's, I love when things take that sort of turn. So, um, so yeah, I did a ton of research. I rewrote some things and it turned into a book. Um, and, uh, when we released the first book, I knew we weren't done with the story. And so now I am writing books two and three. It's going to be a trilogy of Master of the Origin of Master Hopkick. Um, yeah. And so that has been an honor and it's been a lot of fun. Um, and then, let's see, we got to come out. We wanted to for a few years and it didn't work out, but we got to come out to Free Training, free training Day Northeast uh, in 2021. Oh, wow. mm -hmm. Yep. And the night before, Chris Rickard found me. And uh, he did what he does best. He just started asking questions really, really excitedly. And uh, that conversation turned into, um, yes, I agree, which uh, I just got the stickers from you. Thank you. So, yeah, that was exciting. Um, I feel legit now. I've got stickers on things. Um, but, uh, yeah, that turned into the Matt Chat teacher guide which is uh it took took the book to a, a whole nother level um so so yeah i'm having a lot of fun writing um and uh that's my that's my big role right now it's kind of funny i was i was just saying to my kids i'm like yes i'm a part of whistle kick yes absolutely from remote northern idaho i just kind of sit and do my thing but awesome. hopefully it's helping it's great to have you here on the team. Uh, we, there's so much that uh, you and everybody does, but I, I'm going to keep saying it. it Whistle Kick would not be what it is today without you. Uh, and before I say goodbye, uh, Robin wants to know how do you get the first book? It's on Amazon. Yep. And uh, there's actually a couple, there's several different versions. There's several different, different editions. I Could guess. somebody drop the direct link in the chat for people that might Chris, be interested? Chris Rickard's going to do it. I know it because he said Amazon's the best bet. Yeah. But yes. awesome. Jenny, thank you so much for thank being you. here. Yeah, thank you guys. And congratulations again. This is, this is awesome.
Awesome. Bye bye. Thanks, Thank Jenny. Bye. Thank you. All right. We're when, saying we're saying goodbye to Jenny, and we're saying hello to Jenny. Hi, hi, Jenny. Hi, Jenny. Hi, guys. <laughs> Welcome. Was that confusing or what? <laughs> It took me so long. Thank you. It's awesome to be here. You're still not used to it. Don't lie. No, I am. But I'm pretty sure that there were emails I sent to one of you that were supposed to go to the other of you. Because uh, oh, for, for that the may audience, have been sent they, to the other Jenny they, because it's not coming. Yeah, to they my both. Mind. They both. They both. They both spell their name <laughs> in the way that my brain doesn't click with. Right, J E N N I. My brain wants a Y, and so to have two that spell it the quote wrong way for my brain, that that was that was a that was a difficult hurdle to get over. Yep. You're but welcome. Here you are. You're here. You're here. Uh, how did you get here, and what do you do now? Awesome. Let's go all the way back to 2015, very early in the martial arts radio world going through a lot of crap in my personal life. And in order to compensate that, I needed more martial arts. So I looked for martial arts podcast and this was the result. And I gave it a try simply because the Bill Wallace episode had just released. And I thought, okay, this is awesome. I was hooked. Right? I, I was looking for, I was. Fast forward about a year of that. I wrote a review that read on an that you won't be able to guess so I read that for. <laughs> Tony Blower. <laughs> nice. That I get to work on now. Mm. 2018, and, and the big step. Army was looking for help transcribing the Fumio Dara episode. Mm. And I had transcription experience and I reached out and I took care of that for him. And that was the beginning. Right after that, he brought me on board to help him write Martial Artist Handbook. And here's the results of that one. I said, as where we are now. This was the most recent release for us, celebrating women in the martial arts. And there are a ton of books. I, I, you know, I brought a couple more just in case, you know, to play with all of that stuff but you know, the hop kick book that chris and jenny were speaking about so they're mostly available on amazon if you want to check those out um they're available in other places now too we're hoping to get our stuff onto bookstore shelves it's, it's and, slowly, and grow our prints excited for me to be spearheading all this slowly yeah, but it's amazing and there's at least three major book projects in the work for this year at least yeah. More books. Yeah. Now, Jeremy, what has it meant yeah. for you to be able to lots more books? Uh, to be able to produce the multiple books? Because when I first came on board, you just had the martial artist handbook, I believe. Um, we had one or two things before that. Um, people forget how not to hold a tournament was my first book. Definitely. Uh, because like three people have bought that book. Um, but what it's, what it's meant is that there are some people that want to consume information in written form and some of the books that, or some of the episodes that we've done that you can listen to it, but some of them are actually pretty dense informationally. And for a lot of people being able to underline or highlight or, you know, circle or bookmark or whatever. You can't really do that with audio. You can't really do that with video, at least not efficiently. So for some people having some of these episodes come out or, you know, we, we take them when we massage them like martial artist handbook, you know, it's not a secret that that first edition of the book was entirely rooted in episodes. I just, I just re reparsed them mm. yeah. in a sense. And so Jenny being part of the team means we can take our best stuff and make it available in different ways because people like that. Awesome. A uh, couple of comments here. Uh, Jeff Absolutely. is enjoying seeing the curtains drawn back and getting a peek at the team. That's kind of cool. Uh, that tournament 
changed Stacy's life. So that's pretty cool. Well, Jenny, thanks for coming on. Is there any last thing you want to add here before you head on out? No, maybe. Very briefly, in case you guys haven't figured this out, Whistlekick is family. This this team is family, but Whistlekick is family. And it's it's beautiful that it all started with you, Jeremy, and it grew. You attracted all these amazing people and look at us now. Can't wait to see where we go. Thanks for being part of it. Thank you, Jenny. Thank you so much. Thank okay. you for having Bye -bye. me. Bye, guys. All right. Um, I, I want to. I, I just want to say something because I want to make sure people understand this. You know, it, um, it's all martial arts radio, right? Because this, as you're hearing, everything that happens is you know one to two degrees of separation from martial arts radio yeah and you know it's led to my statement that i've said often our best stuff is free yeah you know our our the events that attract the most people they're free martial arts radio is free thanks karen if you want to go deeper we have paid options you know we keep doing that but uh, i always want the best stuff to be free because I, I want as few barriers between what we do and people being able to enjoy it or, or learn from it. And you said something which leads perfect into our next real short chat, short thing we'll chat about here, which is uh, what you said is that everything's only one degree of separation from Whistle State Martial Arts Radio. Uh, a number of years ago, you started running uh, a morning talk show. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's not a talk show in terms of you bring guests on and you talk to them. It's just you. Yeah. But, you know, First Cup is something that you started doing how long ago? Um, I, I, we're over a thousand episodes. So four, four, I, I honestly don't know that time gets so blurry for me on this stuff. Yeah, but it would be people would be hard pressed to say that your work doing First Cup has not impacted Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. It absolutely has. Yeah. And. Uh, you know, you did First Cup for a while just yourself, and then you brought on Frank, who's unable to join us tonight, uh, but he, I know he's in the chat. Um, what was that like to have Frank be able to help you as a producer for First Cup? It meant that the thing that I had the hardest time with, which was coming up with what to talk about, hmm. you know, and, and it's, you know, if you if you come to First Cup now, you know, there, there's an audience, when I started First Cup, there wasn't an audience. You have to have the thing before there's an audience. And so there would be days I would be doing this morning show, which originally was meant to be 10 minutes. And no one would show up because it was new. Yeah, It's really hard to have a spontaneous conversation without an audience. And hey, Andrew, past guest. Um, what happened was... was I, I think Frank started posting them in the chat. I don't remember. Was it quotes or jokes? He started posting something in the chat. And somehow that led to, hey, would you like to do this formally? And so now for years, Frank has made sure we have quotes to, quote, fall back on. And we, we almost always end up talking about them. But it becomes, it, it's it's sort of similar to the word association episodes that we do of martial arts radio, where... Okay, here's a here's a quote. You know, it was a famous quote. Like today, we had quotes from Dolly Parton. It was questions. Okay, uh, Frank also has a brilliant memory. He'll remember what quotes we've used years ago. His his skill with this is is unparalleled. And so I'll take these quotes and I'll read them to the audience, and and we'll we'll talk about them and we'll relate them back to martial arts. And it's it's interesting and it's fun and it's. If one of the things that it has directly affected martial arts radio with First Cup is I have to be spontaneous. I have to keep the conversation going. You go back to the early days of First Cup, it's very similar to the early days of martial arts radio. Uh, and now I have this, and we talked about this on, I think it was on 700, that I can have, a, I, I can talk and think at the same time. I can run two parallel tracks, which yeah. I don't know how my brain does it, but I can do it 
And it allows me to keep talking while I'm thinking about the next thing that I'm going to bring up. Yep. Awesome. All right. Are you ready for your next guest? I'm never ready for the next guest. <laughs> I don't know if anybody's ready for the next guest. Hey! <laughs> oh, oh, wait, Andrew, this is yeah. awkward. Oh, we're wearing the same thing, except my... Hold on, hold on, hold on, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Episode oh, 800. God. You finally are at the number of episodes that I have dragon hoodies. How many how many hoodies are you wearing? Is, 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 no, just the one. Just we're, the we're, one. Not, we're not Russian nesting doll. Yeah, for, yeah, for those for those that are only listening, uh, Craig showed up wearing a dragon hoodie, uh, a yellow and and uh, maroon one. Yes. Yeah, yellow and red. My oh, Iron yeah. Man one. Uh, Simil and similar I, in color to yours. Andrew. So look at mine. Mine is is maroon, gold, and black. Um, and. Craig, when he saw that we were both wearing a dragon hoodie, took one dragon hoodie off to show that he was wearing another dragon hoodie underneath, red and black. <laughs> um, uh, Jenny, uh, Jenny fell out of her chair for the second you're time. You're welcome, Jenny. Okay. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. So, Craig, welcome. Uh, you, you've been listening here. You know what I'm going to ask you. How did you get connected to the show, and what is it you're doing now? I don't know. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> um so i actually had time to uh to look this up so the first time jeremy and i chatted was uh six years ago 2017 i uh i went all the way back in our facebook chat which took a while um and i had found the show probably about a year prior to me actually having the the i'm gonna say the courage to reach out to have jeremy come down and, and teach at the school um, and I found the show because my friend uh, Terry Dow was had an episode and I saw his name. And so I listened and it, it just I, I liked the way the conversation went and it was there. I, I would actually say the first conversation that Jeremy and I had about joining the team was probably in 2018. And then we and then we decided it wasn't time yet. And so I was always there and in the background, but never officially responsible for anything. I was kind of Jeremy's sounding board. Um, and then uh, about a year and a half ago, we decided to make Matic uh, happen, martial arts teacher training certification, and that's kind of been my focus, along with any other project or random episode you all need me for. Cause um, this one would count, so this is episode number four thirteen for me. I counted. <laughs> it's the Craig yeah. Show. Yeah, hey, you know. Um, yeah, but it's been a fun ride, man. It's a lot of fun. It's a good time. Also, I want to point out, because Jenny was on here earlier, talked about her Master Hop Kick stickers. I also have Maddox stickers now. Nice. And I feel just as cool as she does. I only have Whistle Kick Martial Arts Radio stickers, but I put them all on my printer. You see, them, this is my, my Whistle Kick printer. It works oh. better because of that. Yep. My my other non-official role, I'm, I'm part of Andrew's road team for Comic-Con. And so I also have about 800 whistle kick stickers here at the house. <laughs> we'll need a little just hold on to them. We'll need them in November. Whenever someone says, hi, we just don't want a sticker. <laughs> yeah, no, it's been fun. It's a, it's a good ride. The Never Settle Awards, the books, Matic, it's it, episodes. It's all good. Stacy needs a Matic sticker, just, you know, she'll be Stay getting tuned. one. Everybody who's attended Matic will be getting a sticker. Watch your watch your mailbox. Yes, Actually, yes watch your email will. box first because I'm going to confirm addresses. Awesome. So, wh what do you guys want to talk about? What are we raising money for? What's, what's <laughs> happening? Is this a telephone? It's not a telephone. <laughs> We're There's raising no money for poor children who can't afford dragon hoodies. Well, okay, I'm in. I, I've got a couple. I know you do. <laughs> I, there's actually one right over there. I have the yellow one. Um, um, I intentionally didn't wear one. This is this is the newest hoodie. This is the most same. everyone showing up has been wearing a hoodie, though. Not everyone, but most everyone has worn a hoodie. I, I I should point out I have more than just dragon hoodies. I've got the free training day hoodies. I've got the fuzzy hoodie. Yeah, I got a lot of stuff. Oh, the fuzzy hoodie. Anytime we have a team meeting, this is a good peek behind the curtain. And Jeremy says, "Check out this product. I buy it <laughs> before the meeting's over." That sometimes happens. Yeah. Um, 
I, uh, Stacy, uh, missed the hoodie memo. Uh, so I find that that's kind of funny. Well, Craig, thanks for, for being here. Thanks for all that you do. Thanks, um, you know, you, you are obviously you're a part of the whistle kick team, uh, and we are all family, but you, as, you and I, man, we're like kindred spirits. My oh, sister. you're like, you're like, you're like an older brother to me, Andrew. We've been on a lot of adventures. Yep, and and a lot more to come. And thank you for being here and all that uh, all that you do. Hey, my pleasure. Have fun, guys. Bye. Awesome. Thanks so much. See ya. Uh, that was fun. It's always yes. fun when Craig's around. For sure. Uh, um, anything you want to want to add before we chat about the next next segment? Uh, I don't. I don't think so. Uh, Josh says, Whistlekick Charity Fundraising. <laughs> the, if we do a charity, we're going to do it right. And yeah. we're not there yet. But um, believe me, it's so all the right. next, next couple of people to talk about, actually, we'll, we're going to lump them together. They couldn't join us today. Um, but there are two people that, that I deal with on a weekly basis, mm. uh, CJ and Joanne. Um, and you know, I want to chat just a little bit about what they do for the company and, uh, how it's helped what we do. Yeah. So one of the, one of the challenges for, for those of you who haven't really thought about it like this, how do you tell people about a podcast? You can have a podcast, but unless people are looking for a podcast, how do you get them to check out a podcast? And we've done a lot of things over the years to, to spread the podcast, get people to check it out. And CJ and Joanne are, are part of those efforts, part by yawning. One of them, being CJ, is the one that does the video clips. And you've seen those usually on release day. We'll put those out. They show up in Reels. They show up on TikTok. They show up all over the place. And Joanne does something similar, she takes the quotes that some of the quotes from the episode and makes awesome graphics out of them. I mean, she really does crush that. And what you don't know is that we're not telling them what to pull. We're not telling them what section goes for the clip. We're not telling them what quote. They pull the stuff that they find interesting. And we can see a difference. You know, we can see a difference with an episode when that stuff goes out versus once in a while, you know, something doesn't line up, we forget, a post doesn't go out, something. And I, I can see it in the numbers. And I appreciate the work that they do. Andrew, you and I have talked about this. I think we're up to eight people involved in every episode. Yep, yep. When when an episode is recorded and released, by the time it gets to your ears, listeners or watchers, uh, eight people have had their hands on that episode, and CJ and Joanne are are, are, are two of those eight people. Um, and you know, it, it's interesting that people don't often think about all of the stuff that's going on when an episode comes out. Like when it comes out, like I go in the Facebook group and l let people know Whistle Kick behind the Whistle Kick Martial Arts Radio behind the scenes. Um, but when I post it, I I always post a graphic that has a photo of the guest it says their episode number and it's got a quote from their episode somebody had to create that yep you know joanne is, joanne is the one that does that she'll go in and listen to the episode and find pull these quotes and she'll she'll send them to me to make sure that uh you know this is a good one or is an appropriate one um just so that there's because we want to you know there's there's yep. double checks on everything that we do yep. um and then if you uh, are on uh, Instagram, Instagram primarily, Instagram, uh, you will see that when we come out with an episode, uh, there is a short video of Jeremy and I, or Jeremy and the guest, whoever, talking, and the, there's it's you know subtitled on the bottom. Um, somebody has to put that together. Somebody has to physically transcribe what was said yep. and put it in the video and upload it on Instagram and. That's what CJ does. And, you know, he'll send it to me as a double check just to make sure that everything lines up right. Uh, but their work is uh, definitely uh, something that we appreciate for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I, I really, you know, when we, when we look at the, the output now, the, the professionalism 
of the team and the things that we do, the details that go into it. You know, you and I actually are spending a lot of time talking about this now about the next evolution of that detail and and emails and, and processes because it's growing and we're trying to continue that momentum. Yeah. All right. So moving on, a couple of quotes here. Uh, Karen says, dragon hoodies are great. Uh, it's part of Craig's training uniform. Uh, and then uh, Victor said, I guess I need a dragon hoodie. It's like the company uniform. And what a perfect time to bring Victor on board. What a segue. I know. The right? master of segues. Um, hey, hey, happy 800 you. episodes. Thank you. Um, uh, Jeremy, real quick, uh, I sent you an email an hour ago. And uh, with cold medicine information in it, and I realized I sent no context. It was in context to like the very first thing that you were saying. Sure. So if you receive a random email from me and you're like, what is he talking about? That's the context of the email. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, I also want to state, Victor, before you get into anything, uh, for the audience uh, watching and listening, uh, when people come on the show like this, they, we have a waiting room that they are placed in, and we can see, I can see them, but we, you, the listener or watcher, can't see them, and you can't hear them. And uh, it, I definitely laughed pretty hard when we were talking about all the hoodies. Victor got up, grabbed, ran behind, grabbed the hoodie, and put it on just so he would match the theme of the show, which is the hoodies. Sometimes I forget I'm on camera. Uh... So you know. it's all good. It's all good. So Victor, uh, welcome. Um, you know, thank you, thank you. Listeners to the show will will recognize you and, and recognize your voice because you've done a couple of recent episodes with mm. us. Um, but this is my third about one. How you how you got connected and about what you're doing. So my connection story is gonna probably really re resonate with Philly Jenny. Uh, we got to go back to about three two or three it's years your before. fourth one is it my fourth one? Oh wow yeah i guess it is anyway so we're gonna have to go back to uh, about two three years before i even contacted you um i was living in florida my school had shut down i was working there and i wasn't training and i love martial arts it's my peaceful place it's my happy place um, and I spent about five years where I would just train alone in this little side alley next to my apartment or in my 400 some odd square foot living room. Uh, and because I'm crazy, I don't listen to music when I work out. I listen to podcasts. And since I lived alone and worked out a lot, I go through podcasts a lot. And I get very frustrated when I catch up to where they are currently. That was not the case with Whistlekick. So I loved it because I'm like, I'm never going to catch up. So fast forward a little bit. I moved from Florida to New Jersey and I had some time to kind of get my feet under me that uh, looking for a job and stuff. And I was like, hey, you know what? It'd be fun to work for a podcast. I wonder if Whistlekick's hiring. So I shot Jeremy an email and he never got back to me. So I got a job at Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> no lie. Um, and then so I think it was like two months after that, I was working at a different job. And I opened my email and there's an email from Jeremy. Hey, sorry, I'm just getting to this. Um, I was in the middle of something, I guess. And he goes, are you still interested? And we literally had a Zoom conversation, like I think that week. And it was for something completely, not completely unrelated, but kind of not what I do now. Um, it started out as just, hey, do this, let's do this thing. And so we agreed on it without really any time frame for me to come on and do anything. And then that was right around the time that you were going to Philly to do a seminar. And I was like, I should probably like meet this dude. Uh, that would be good. So I called my cousin because he trains too. And I was like, hey, what are you doing Saturday? I know you're coming to Philly with me. We're driving into the city and we're going to go train. And we hung out with you and Andrew and uh, Jenny 
and a whole bunch of other people all day long. And only Jeremy knew who I was. And it was awesome. It was hilarious because I still remember at the end, because my cousin doesn't let me live it down because he thinks it was hilarious, is that when I finally said goodbye to everyone, I think it was Andrew who you were like, oh, this is our Victor. This is Victor. Yeah, this is our Victor. Right. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's me. Uh, and so now here I am. That was two years yeah. ago at this point. We, so because we had never we had not met. Like Jeremy had had mentioned in the car, because we I drove down with you, Jeremy. Uh we you know, you had mentioned that this, you know, you we had this guy coming on board, you're onboarding this guy named Victor, and this is what he's gonna do. And uh and I was like, Oh, that's great. And then we go to the training, we train for the day, and then at the end of the day we're saying goodbye. And you said, oh, you know, we, we met officially at the end when we're saying goodbye to each other. And you said, Victor. And I said, oh, wait, you're our Victor. Yeah, mm. that, that was uh, that was pretty funny. Jenny, Jenny remembers the day, too, uh, remembered when I realized <laughs> that you were our Victor. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's so funny. Um, now, Victor, what is it that you're doing for the company now? So originally it started out as the manager of a brand ambassadors. Uh, so we were looking, started by looking for individuals who were social media influencers who wanted to kind of fly the whistle kick uh, flag. And it was an interesting endeavor to try to do and to get people um, to come on board with that because like, I was just talking to someone about this today and then you just said it yourself, Jeremy, most of our best stuff we give away for free. And what do brand ambassadors do? They sell products for a brand. So how do you get people to sell products that are free for a brand on social media? And then I was doing that a little bit with some kind of working out and you said, Hey, Victor, I think you'd be good at, a, at, at this job. And I want you to think about it. I say you were looking to do sponsorships and partners to find people to buy ad space you know, to, to advertise on the Whistlekick podcast. And I, it was at that moment that I realized that, oh, yeah, it is the only podcast that I listen to that doesn't have weird advertisements at the top or in the middle. And I was like, that's kind of weird. And so I said yes, because you gave me the weirdest compliment anyone's ever given me. And you said, I think you'd be very okay with people just saying no to you and you would, you'd be okay with that. So that's why I think you'd be good for this job. And I'm like, okay, thanks, I guess. Um, <laughs> and so I came on and after doing a little bit of that, and I'm on an episode that actually posted what last a week ago or so, something like that. And where I, where I talk more about this, so I won't get into it, but what I like to think of as I've, dubbed myself is I am the sponsor sponsors and partnership guy. I look for other companies and other people who I think would team well with our goal, our vision and the heart and spirit that is whistle kick mm -hmm. so that instead of them giving us uh compensation and us saying how great they are that we can actually come together and rising tide raise all ships so that we are mutually beneficial to everyone which i think is a very martial principle to begin with is martial artists i've always at least my experience have always existed in my life to help and support each other and why not extend that past our family as jenny called us to you know, those we're listening to, to bring them before quality things and um, services that they could use, while at the same time, finding quality businesses and services that maybe could use a little bit of a push to be given a, a stage in front of an audience. Awesome. That's great. Jeremy, anything uh, you want to add before we say goodbye? To um, it, I, I, th I think I've told you this, Victor, but it... <sighs> we knew pretty early on that the brand ambassador stuff wasn't quite going to go where we were hoping it was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, and that's, that is 100% not your fault. It's the fault of lots of scammy companies that have destroyed that terminology. And, you know, there's only so much you can do to overcome perception. Mm -hmm. But when I saw your persistence 
there was something in the back of my mind that said, maybe this is the right guy for ads. Because we were set up to take ads years ago, just the right person hadn't come along. In fact, Andrew, you and I talked about it. Yeah, you, I said, you, would you like to sell ads? This is before Victor, you were around. Yeah, and, yeah, and you I said, said no, I don't want to do that. And I was like, well, shoot, I don't want to do that. <laughs> and a lot of other people were not going to be good fits for that because it required a lot of research and a lot of comfort with being told no. You know, yeah. someday we'll get to the point where people, where brands are reaching out to us, where they're doing the hard work for us, much like the guests, right? Andrew, like we have plenty of people reaching out now. They want to come on the show. In right. the early days, we had to reach out to everybody. And so when I saw that it wasn't working, the ambassador stuff, I said, okay, I think this is the right guy. But you had a couple of things that you were working on that you wanted to try. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay, I can't be premature on this. I need to make sure that he's going to follow through. So you were being tested in a sense for quite a while because I really desperately wanted to just say, go do this. Cause I think you'll crush it. Yeah. And to be fair, like, I think that because I, I feel like you, you, you've gotten to know me fairly well over, over our, our time, our time knowing each other. But I feel like if you had given me, that that job opportunity right away and that i would have probably just said no i i wouldn't i wouldn't have or at least i wouldn't have approached it in the same way just because of my 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 mindset and where i was in my life yeah. so i i needed i needed that time which is funny because you think as you think as a martial artist i'd be used to like uh failure but no, not I still I still can't can't deal with it sometimes. But I needed that time of hitting my nose against a wall because that now now I even more so don't care when people don't get back to me. Or or when they get back to me two months after I email them on a whim because it would be fun to work for a company that is about martial arts. Cool. And and so the audience might be thinking, well, you know, where are these sponsors? Where are these ads? Mm -hmm. Invoice for the first one because we knew Tate, we knew the first one was going to be hard, the hardest. Mm -hmm. We had to figure all this stuff out on the fly. You did a ton of work, and uh, it's it will be very soon. Mm -hmm. I, I was just about to ask, are we going to agree to announce who it is? But no, not no. yet. Okay. No. No, I, I's need to be dotted, T's need to be crossed, and it, we okay. really are down to that at that point. Actually, mm -hmm. it's not even that. It's we've we've sent them the paperwork. They just need to return something small, and once that happens, we will move forward. And you even had, if I remember correctly, what I'm expecting to be number two. Yeah, number two I had that. Two. I had I, I had that conversation today, and it was okay. great. It was awesome. So, awesome. Great Momentum. companies, great things for our listenership, and great opportunities for everyone all around. Great. Well, Victor, thank you so much for coming on. Uh, thanks for all that you do and that you are continuing to do to help make this podcast happen. Thanks. Always a pleasure. Thanks for letting me be a part of it, guys. Of course. Awesome. Thanks. Um, so a couple little chat comments here. Stacy, uh, someone who helps with sponsorships for the hospital. Partnership is so much more valuable than just money, which is absolutely true. Yeah. So um, we've got we've got one more guest to bring on. Our most recent person that we've onboarded onto the team, uh, and I'm going to bring that person on right now. And he's wearing a hoodie, so that's good. What's going on, guys? Hey, Brian. Hey, guys. How are you, Brian? Good. So excited. Episode 800. It's pretty cool. Pretty cool. Yeah, very cool. Looking at the lighting, just like, yeah, you're fine. Don't worry about right. it. You're good. Um, yeah. So how did you get connected? Uh, <laughs> Jenny, Jenny, Jenny says hi. So, hi, Jenny. Uh, how did you get connected and what is it you're doing for the team? So as listening to all the, the, the team members and the new family, you know, um, Jeremy and I have a longer history than than most anybody i yeah. i think any i anybody so, real quick the or craig 
I was going to order a dragon hoodie, but they are on back order for Craig. Anyway, um, <laughs> <laughs> so I knew Jeremy pre Whistle Kick. Uh, we've known each other for just over two decades. We started as acquaintances from town. We had a mutual friend. Jeremy had the computer store. I was a computer nerd. I'd hang out for him and sit and stuff. Um, you know, and then fast forward many years later, I got back into Taekwondo at um, the school that we both go to, uh, Grandmaster Rhoda and in Randolph. And, you know, when I knew Jeremy at the computer store, I didn't actually realize he was an accomplished martial artist for almost all his life. And then when I saw him, when I went back to, to class for my middle boy, because he was having trouble. So that was part of the suggestion from the uh, the counselor to get him into martial arts. Um, I saw Jeremy in class one day and then I was like, wait a minute. And we kind of got to talking. And honestly, that changed our dynamic of knowing each other instantly. Um, we became a lot more close in that regard. Uh, more of a, you know, a kinship, brothership, uh, fellowship, however you want to say it. Um, and, and then I remember when he started whistle kick and, you know, and kind of some of the struggles that went along with that at first, uh, and he always pressed on, which was inspiring to see. Um, and then, you know, long story short, Jeremy reached out to me, I want to say last year, a little bit, there was one project we were looking at that might be a good fit for me. Wasn't a good time. You know, we backed off and then we kind of revisited it. And now I'm essentially kind of helping direct some of the communication with all these people because the lines are so blurred and there's so many things going on all the time. And so many people. Right. And so many people. And as it continues to grow, it's just, you know, it's a little, it's another node to kind of help direct traffic. Um, and I'm sure that will morph into other things as well. In fact, I was thinking about it when I went to my first free training day down in uh, New Hampshire, when actually Andrew and I split a room, which was nice because that helped with the cost and things. Thank you again. Um, I remember kind of just volunteering and, and Chris handing, like I was helping him with the name tags and stuff with a list of stuff. And I was almost like thinking back, like, was that my trial? And I didn't know like the commitment to the whistle kick mission, um, which was, I just had a lot of fun doing it. So I presume as the events happen and things, I will, I, I feel like I will become a little bit more integral to those type events. I want to. Um, it's it, know, it's like any know. other, you know, think about a family business. Right. Right. What happens in a family business and anybody who's ever worked or in or known a family business, but think of like a restaurant, like a family run restaurant. You know, you've got you've got like the eight year old running around, like filling the salt shakers. Like it's just all hands on deck, especially, you know, when it's busy, you know, Friday night, Labor Day weekend or whatever. And it's just swamped. And no, you can't go out. You're not going on that date. You're not going to the movies. Everybody's here. We've got work to do. And not that, you know, I, I say things like that, but that is what happens. Right. You know, people just show up uh, when when the time is right. And yeah, you know, you, you got a front row seat to the beginnings of beginning of Whistlekick in a way that very few other people did. You know, he was around for uh, a lot of the trials and, and me trying to figure out how to even talk about the sparring gear and, and, and stuff like that. And yeah, it um, it set a tone for our friendship. It changed some things in a really positive way. And uh, I'm. I'm thankful you're around because the thing you know i mentioned there are things that andrew and i are working on to take the show up a level and you're a part of that you know the, the communication you know when you've got eight people touching an episode right yeah excellent that's that's awesome so brian you are the most recent uh addition to the whistle kick team but uh I'm I am so I'm sure that you will not be the last. Oh, no. we, oh, no, no. we will continue to grow. So you're the new guy. You're the new guy right now, but only for a little while. Right. <laughs> awesome. Well, anything Thanks, you wanna you wanna leave us with any words you wanna leave us with before you go? Yeah, the one thing I wanted to add was, you know, when I moved into the house and stuff and and started listening to um, the first cup show as part of my morning routine. Um, you know, I had struggled personally, mentally getting back into martial arts because I had broken a foot and stuff and things of that nature. Uh, and th this journey 
has solidified my love again for martial arts and my commitment. Like I went to class tonight, the kids weren't with me, but you know, it's not just about the kids for me anymore. Um, so that's part of the mission of, of whistle kick really is to spread that love of martial arts. And I'm living proof that it, it works. <laughs> awesome. So. Brian, thank you so thank much you. for being here. Uh, and thanks, thanks for all, the, all that you do, my friend. Yes, sir. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. And there's a very s small difference between the gesture you made and the Italian version of that gesture. Oh, just be just be careful. Okay, I, I don't, I don't know, know, the, I know that, it, that for if, those listening, I made the ASL uh, sign for thank you. From 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 the lips is thank you. If you come up under the chin, it means something completely. Oh, different. I see, I see, I see. Yeah, yeah. No, from, from the lips. Um, <laughs> and you know, th this is a, a good time to to say, you know, we are we're always open to help. If, if you want to get involved, email me, Jeremy at whistlekick.com. And I'm going to ask you, the first question I'm going to ask you is what are you good at or what do you want to learn? Cause that's where we root it. Yeah. <laughs> are you hiring? Always, always. Um, and full disclosure, most people are either volunteering or they are working for profit share on a thing that has not made profit yet. I've been very, very open about that, but I also work hard. And Andrew, you know this as well as anyone. I will always find ways. How how can I how can I compensate you? How can I make your life better? How can I make things easier? You know, um, because I appreciate the work that everyone does. Because I know what it was like when it was just me, and it was hard, and we couldn't do all the things that we do if it was just me. I would try, but I would die. Yeah. So uh, we brought on a bunch of guests today. We, we talked about the beginning of where Whistlekick was. We did a, a nice little chronological timeline. Mm -hmm. Where do you see Whistlekick going from here? And episode 801 is a cop out. <laughs> that's, that's great. Um, you know, it's interesting that there are, I, I have this thought, if we think about martial arts radio, I have this thought, you know, am I going to do this forever? I don't think so. But then I also think, okay, well, when would I stop? And I don't have an answer. Hmm. Um, my involvement in this show, my role with Whistlekick, everything, I will continue to do it as long as it makes sense. The mission, I don't see the mission changing, but there could be a time where there's something that is more of more benefit to the mission involving my time than this show. So that's why I'm not saying, you know, I'll always be the primary host on this show because I don't, I don't know, I, I may not be. We will continue to find ways to serve the martial arts public, to serve our mission. And a lot of that is dictated by who we have on the team, mm -hmm. right? When, when, you know, Victor was a good example. I had this idea. I thought we could have someone in charge of, of partnerships. But I couldn't force someone into that role. It needed to be the right person in that role. And everybody who's come on has ultimately found their right role. We've tried people in other roles. We've shifted some things around and said, no, that doesn't quite work for you. Let's, uh -huh. let's move you back over here. And so we will grow in a way that makes sense based on who the people are that are coming on. And we'll always look for roles that, that, that those roles are providing value to everyone, including the person yeah. doing it. You know, I, I never want someone to look at an email from me and go, Ugh. another email from Jeremy. I, I never want to be a boss. Yeah. 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 I think the best analogy that you've given is find the right people that you want on the bus and then find them a seat. Right. And I, okay. I, I, I truly, truly believe that that's the best analogy. Like Victor is an amazing person. I mean, I'm signaling Victor out cause I see him in the waiting room still, but like Victor, Brian, um, Craig, Jen, like everybody, Jenny, Jenny, everybody are so amazing. We needed them. We, mm -hmm. the Royal We, Whistle Kick, needed them on the bus, working, doing something for the company. 
but that doesn't mean that we, the Royal, we knew what that stump, something was. And right. and Victor's a perfect example. You met him and said, oh, he's going to have add value, but we're going to figure out where is the best place for that to happen. Yeah. And I think that's okay because we have the right people on the team. Yeah. And, and it's, you know, it's kind of funny that you bring that up as, as something I said prior. That comes from Jim Collins' book, From Good to Great. Mm -hmm. which is uh, my business Bible. If anyone out there has a business and hasn't read it, I would strongly encourage you to. The consulting work that I do with folks, it's a book that comes up often. Uh, it's an absolutely fantastic book. Well, I'm also reading the next book that Jim Collins wrote. There's kind of a trilogy and it's called Built to Last. And as I was driving home yesterday, I was listening to it in the car and without getting into too much detail, he's comparing companies, some that have been very successful versus others that, you know, on paper should have been about the same, but we're not. And as he's talking about them, I'm like, it's the, it's the mission. It's the why the successful companies have a mission. And in the very next sentence, it was like, and what we found in our research was the companies didn't have a very strong why statement. And I was like, Aha! <laughs> right we've got a really strong why we've got a mission that we wear on our sleeve we want more people doing martial arts because we know what it's done for us and i do not believe that there is a better way for me to leave some mark on the world than leading this organization because let's face it if the more people that train the better the world gets yeah. we know that martial arts helps bring out better versions of ourselves and so the more people we can get to train, we're making an improvement. And that's why we do what we do. It is really that simple. Doesn't mean it's easy, but it is that simple. Yeah, perfect. Um, in reference to, you know, a lot of the people on the team are, are volunteering. Jenny made this comment, which I think is perfect. The bonus of the friendships I've made, thanks to Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio, is the best payment of all. It is pretty amazing that we're all family. Um, Stacy said, uh, back on the bus, we've all got stuff to do. And then Jenny said, uh, moving right along from the Muppets comes to mind. It's pretty funny. So, and then, and then I, I want to, I want to put this one up because it's a great example. It's, it's a nerdy comment. We have a lot of nerdy oh, yeah. things going on. We're a big group of nerds, but there's room for all kinds of nerds. And Stacy says, and much like the TARDIS, there's always room for more good people. And there are. You know, Absolutely. so again, if anybody if anybody wants to be part of this and, and um, we have people that put in, you know, an hour a month, two hours a month, we have people who put in that a day, you know, if you're if you're interested in getting involved, we'll find a spot and, for you. Yeah. And, and there are projects that you could be a part of that. I mean, I'm thinking one in my head right now that would be five minutes on a week. Yeah, they're really if, if if you can handle the discipline of doing things on an ongoing basis, yeah, yeah, um, we can use you. We'll put you to work. One of, one of the last com, you know, I, we're we're wrapping up here, but there's another comment here that came in that uh, we're a big group of nerds. Better end up on a dragon hoodie or something. Maybe, maybe it will. If it if it did, we know we'd sell one to Craig. That's right. There are times I'm like, I don't know if I should put this out, but if I do, Craig will buy one. <laughs> Jeremy, we're wrapping up here. Episode and, 800 has come to a close. Andrew, I want to thank you for putting this together. This was a bunch of work on your part, and I appreciate it. I appreciate you. Um, I think your participation in the show is the most obvious example to publicly of how the show has changed. And it not just on the episodes that you're a part of, Right. It's very clear if you look at, you know, and, and I, I suspect everybody will agree with this, that if you find the point in time, you know, pre Andrew with Andrew, that it got a lot better. You know, our Thursday episodes are, are dramatically better. I don't know if I've told you this, but before you were part of Thursday shows, there was a dramatic drop off. People loved the interview episodes. They were not such a fan of me rambling on solo. Mm. 
but once you became part of it, there are now people who prefer the Thursday episodes. Mm. That those are that those are of the two formats. Those are the ones they like more. Nobody really said that before before you. So thank you. Well, it's been uh, a true pleasure and an honor to be a part of the show, uh, and 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 not just the show. I mean, people that uh, people know that I, I do more than just co-host the show. I mean, I, and produce the show. I mean, I'm involved in other stuff as well, uh, and uh, I'm honored to be a part of it because I truly believe in what Whistlekick stands for, uh, and I. It's one of the reasons why I'm still a Patreon subscriber. Like people. Mm find that weird but like these stickers i'm pointing to here these these are because because i'm a patreon subscriber i get these free stickers every three months i get a free sticker so like uh, even though i am on the show i'm still paying for the show because it means that much to me so thank you jeremy for all that you do because obviously this podcast wouldn't exist without you it's true you know, I mean, it, it might continue in the future. Who knows? But it wouldn't be here if you didn't exist. So that's true. A uh, couple last minute, last little things here. Congratulations to Jeremy and the team. Change the world one episode at a time. I agree, Jimmy. Try it. Anything, Jeremy, you want to say to close out? No, uh, I, I want to thank everybody for being here. I want to thank everyone who. Uh, gave of their time either to watch or to participate. I want to thank everyone for their continued support. Uh, if it, we did not have an audience, it would just be crazy people rambling on, talking to nobody, and that's not really fun. But Instead of crazy people rambling on, talking to people. Right, to other crazy people who enjoy the rambling. <laughs> and I appreciate that. You know, this, this has been this is a good turnout for this and i'm really thankful for that and uh if anybody has feedback thoughts ideas guests topics whatever you know we're we're always we're always down to hear it so excellent uh we're leading the field and are the joe rogan of traditional martial arts podcasts if anybody can help me get on there i really want to have a chat with joe about mma All right, Jeremy, until next time. All right. Train hard. Train hard. Smile. Smile. Have a great day. All right. I'm hitting end.